Chase with the K20 Center and the last video that I made I showed you how to create a free website using Weebly.com which is a free website creation tool um, and I just showed you some basic uh, elements and, and ways to create just a basic home page this is the one we created last time if you uh, remember the video I want to show you some advanced tools that will dress this page up and actually add some functionality. So um, here we go. Um, the first thing I want to show you is the option to add pages to your website, and you can use those pages to display, you know, any number of you know things that you want to uh, show your students. Um, but it's really easy to add pages. All you have to do is come up to the top bar and select pages okay and we're going to add a new page now if you're a, a, a teacher and you want to use this in the classroom you might want to have a page that has some useful links for the students to go to so let's just go ahead and, and make that page you can see that I pressed add page and I have to give it a title so I'm just gonna call this useful links okay and um, we'll get to some of these options later on but I'm gonna go ahead and save these settings and once I do you're gonna see that it's gonna take me back to my website editor and you can see that that tab is now open I have a new page now if I was to click this tab it's going to open up that page once it loads it's going to open up that page and it's not going to have anything on it. Um, and if I click home again, it's going to take me back to my home page. Okay? But if I click useful links, I can start adding in some, uh, some things here. So if I was to uh, add in a useful link, one thing that I didn't show you on the last video is how to actually use uh, or make the text uh, link to a website. So what we're going to do is, just like last time, we're going to take the title text um, element we're gonna drag it straight down we're gonna click here to edit and let's just uh, let's put a link to Google on here since it's great okay now that's just text if I were to press on that uh, text inside the website it wouldn't take me anywhere but if I highlight Google you can see that it pulls up a toolbar and I can make it bold I can uh, increase the font size make it bigger um, and I can also link it so if I say create link and say link to a website and we just put in google.com and we save it you can see that if I click outside the box that Google is going to be underlined and whenever somebody visits my site and they click on Google they can actually go to Google okay um, let's add in another link. Uh, let's we're gonna do the same process. I could either put my uh, my uh, new link above or below. I'm gonna choose below. Okay, and this one's gonna be to the K20 Center. So I'm just gonna say K20. See if I can spell today. Make sure and highlight it. I'm gonna increase the font size just to make it look even create link website k20 center.ou.edu we press save and if we click outside the box you can see that it's underlined and uh, we can we can save that link now but whenever we make changes remember you need to publish your changes otherwise all your text will go away all your videos will go away all your pictures will go away and you'll be very very sad so publish and you can see that it's going to publish to practiceweebly1.weebly.com just like our last page okay and now if we click home you know here's our original home page and here's our links that we created okay if we were to actually go to our website practice and I'm just going to use a shortcut here but practiceweebly1.weebly.com Here's our actual site on the uh, web. Here's our homepage, and here's our useful links. And if I click Google, 
it's going to take me to Google and let me just make sure K20 Center is working there's a K20 Center website right there and it looks like those links work so um, let's make another page and if you're a teacher you might want to have a page that has some of your assignments that you have in class that way you know if a kid is gone a day or you know there's a baseball field trip or you know whatever um, let's go ahead and let's add another page okay we're gonna call this one assignments and if we press save you can see that we have our new tab called assignments right here if I click assignments it's gonna show that nothing is on that tab okay and I can add assignments wherever I need to uh, but during the whole school year if you keep on putting all your assignments on this one page it's gonna get a little bit clogged up and it's not gonna look as nice and kids aren't gonna be able to find their assignments as easy so what I suggest doing is creating a, a couple of sub pages to help organize some of their assignments so if we go back to pages okay and we press add page and we just say first first semester and we add another page and we call this one second second semester and we save that we can see that that first semester and second semester are created as pages now I don't really like looking at this because it's a little bit too much information for me so if we go back to pages and uh, we make these two sub pages inside assignments if we just drag these bars over click and drag until they fall over as a sub page of assignments and we save those settings you can see that the tabs go away they're not there anymore but if I roll over assignments I can click first semester or second semester alright kinda neat makes it clean makes it pretty so if I go back to home and I roll over to assignments you can see first sem semester and second semester alright um, want to make sure I'm published because we've done a lot of changes uh, practice Weebly 1, we're all good. And if I reload our page here, this is on the actual internet, by the way, this is not the editor. You can see that assignments appears, and we have first semester and second semester. Let me go back to our editor. Let's put something, let's put an assignment in our first semester box. Okay? I just rolled over first semester, clicked it. Let's just say that you have a assignment that's uh, contained within a Word document. Um, if I come over to the bar here and I press the multimedia tab, it's going to give you some options to choose. Uh, I want to insert a file so I'm just going to drag it down and let's just say my assignment I'm going to upload my Word document here I press open it'll see that it scans for viruses and then it puts it directly onto your website I want to make sure and publish that try to remember to publish as much as off as you possibly can so that way you don't lose any of your stuff there's your file um, let's add something to the second semester so if I click second semester you can see that I don't have any assignments on there if I drag down a file again I can load a PowerPoint so let me just, now if I click here, you're going to see the little toolbar appears, upload a new file, example PowerPoint, that's the one I created for this, open, it uploads it just like that, and if I make sure and publish, there we go. So if I'm, I'm going to go back to our actual website, I'm going to let it reload since we made all those changes and if 
I roll over and I click first semester, you can see that I can download that assignment right there. And if I click second semester, I can download this PowerPoint that is found right here. So that's a little uh, a way to make your pages look a little bit more neat and orderly. And if you didn't see how I did that, right underneath assignments, I scooted over first semester and I scooted over second semester underneath. It's kind of like an outline format, but if I scoot those over, it's going to make those sub pages inside of assignments. Okay? Um, there's a couple more things that I want to show you that are going to be very, very useful for a teacher. I'm going to go ahead and create another page, add page, and we're going to call this one. Ooh, man, my spell is bad. Call it pictures. If I save the settings, there's my tab. Let's put in some pictures that you might have taken in class. Uh, remember, this is the World Wide Web where anybody can access your page. Uh, because you have a free version, you won't be able to have a password on your page. So make sure that it's okay to post student pictures on here. Um, I didn't even worry about uh, posting student pictures because I never took pictures of their faces or anything to indicate who they were. It was just hands uh, working on a lab or something like that. So I kind of I, I kind of got around it by never you know showing a student's face. But let's just say that you have a few pictures that you want to show and maybe a photo gallery. If I go up back up to the multimedia and I grab photo gallery and drag it down and it says click here to upload images. Let me find my pictures here. I've just got some random pictures. I'm going to highlight all the ones that I want. Press open. And you can see that it's uploading those pictures just like that. There's my Isaac Newton, there's my Oklahoma City Thunder, there's my Sooners, and there we go. And if we publish that, go back to our website that's posted, reload it, just to make sure we got it on there. Firefox is being a little bit slow today. There we go. If I click pictures, it'll take me to my pictures that I uploaded. Easy enough. One more thing that I wanted to show you. I had a couple of questions on the, the assignment turn in, uh, or the assignment form. And so I wanted to kind of show you how that works. Um, if I go to pages and I add another page that says Turn in. Oops. Sorry, I forgot to add a page. That would have messed me up. Call it turn in, save the settings. Hold on, I got a little bit messed up. I'm going to delete this. This one right there. Yes, delete page. Thank you. Save the settings. All right, you can see I've got a tab now and it's called Turn In. If I click that tab, you're gonna see that nothing's on there. If I drag down the assignment form and place it on the page, it's going to uh, have a Dropbox for the students to turn in their assignments. So if they've got a, a, a document, uh, you know, a Word document or a PowerPoint or Excel or something of that nature, they can turn it into you uh, through this uh, assignment form and you can see that you you they have to enter in their first and their last name and then their email this has got to be a working email and then they can upload their file there but if I click this um, box it's going to give me some options where I can change the form around so if I click the box and I press form options and get rid of that there and let's it, we want to keep it called assignment form just like that email us submit uh, submissions to um, let me make one up email 
at email.com. Okay, and I'm just doing that just to show you guys. But if I keep that just like right there, advanced options, don't really need to mess with. But it's going to email me at whatever email I put in there. So if you have a teacher email that you want all your kids to submit to, you can do that. All right. So uh, email dot email dot com blah 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 close and it sets it right down on the page. If I make sure and publish this and click up at the top to show my display website, if I click turn in, you can see that that assignment form is right here. So let's just practice. If I was a student, let's just practice. Um, let's see, I'm gonna call myself CJ. Singer. Uh, my email is going to be cj at email.com. Not a real one, by the way, if you didn't notice. And if I looked in my computer to find my assignment that I created, I'm just going to use this example hello, everyone. I press open and submit it. It'll give me a confirmation that my information had been submitted. And when you go back, you're going to receive an email uh, with the email address that you posted on, uh, underneath the form options right here. But also you can view entries. So if I view entries, you're going to see that CJ Singer uh, submitted this Hello Everyone document and it's got a timestamp on it so that way you know that it was turned in on time. All right, very useful tool. I highly recommend it. All right, guys, uh, that's a couple of the advanced tools used in Weebly.com. There are some more that you can investigate and learn on your own. It's been fun showing you how to create your own web page. If you need any more information, please visit k20center.ou.edu. Thanks a lot.